Howdy folks, thanks for tuning in tonight. Hope y'all doing okay. So, I feel like I've had this general tone of conversation or vlog or whatever you want to call it already. And I was irritated the last time I had this say something like this and this one's irritating to me as well. celebrated her death and I thought that was cold callous um, heartless all sorts of words I didn't know Ruth Bader Ginsburg personally the only reason I know her is the fact that she was a Supreme Court Justice and you know, her face was somewhat prominent. She was, okay, we'll just say she was Googleable. <clears throat> now, all that said, I did feel sorry for her family. I know what it's like to lose people. I know what it's like to lose people to cancer. And it's rough watching them go down that road. So, while I never met Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I respect her as a human being. I respect her informed opinion, which may disagree with mine. Doesn't change my mind on the fact that I disagree with her opinions on some things. I never wished ill on her when news became prominent, or, or news became public that she was uh, a cancer patient. You know, I wished her recovery and health and all that. And I thought it was disgusting that people were speaking ill of the dead and dragging her name through the mud and celebrating her death, so to speak. And now, the same side of the aisle that was how dare you say that about Ruth Bader Ginsburg is going after Rush Limbaugh. It drives me nuts. They're calling him racist and everything else. Now, I want to say something. And I... I'm a big talker, if y'all hadn't noticed. Um, Rush, I can't say that I listen to him constantly. My dad got into him in the early 90s and kind of never stopped listening to him, honestly. And he disagreed with Rush on things. He just thought it was a great place to get the news because Rush would be honest about things that he reported incorrectly. And he was not afraid to 
change his opinions. When I started working my night shift job with this long commute, I started occupying the drive with the news. And that was one of the sources I turned to. I listened to a lot of things. I listened to NPR. I listened to Rush. I listened to political podcasts on both sides of the aisle during my drive and also during my time at work, during the shift. So, what I'm saying is not, you know, coming from someone that was a sole consumer of Rush Limbaugh. As a matter of fact, I hadn't listened to him in quite a while. I found other sources that I preferred listening to on both sides of the aisle. So, but one of the things, you know, people have kind of done a, a top ten worst, you know, some of the reporting on Rush and his passing, there's been a lot of, like, basically the top ten worst things he said. Okay. <clears throat> Where I come down on that, he was on air for, in full syndication for 30-ish years, ish, I don't remember the exact year, and he spoke whenever he was on air, he was on for three hours, which with commercial breaks brought it down to about two hours and change, maybe a little less. Because he, you know, had to deal with the formatting on radio stations. Well, what irritated me is the guy was talking during a three-hour broadcast radio show for 30-plus years. And if anyone does that for that amount of time, they're going to say some stuff that is not as well formed as it should be, easy to misunderstand, or just flat out wrong or bad. Just a fact. And judging someone on their top 10 worst is kind of a bad way to look at it because you don't know if they've got a top 20 worst. They might not have 20. So it just irritated me to see that happen. It also irritated me to hear some of the, you know, um, being thankful for the fact that he's gone. You know, I've, I've never met the man one time on a Monday off work. I actually managed to get through. It, I was not able to speak with Rush personally. I spoke with um, one of the guest hosts. I'm trying to remember his name. can't remember his name right off. But I got through, and I don't even remember the question I asked because I was just so elated at the time. I wish I had a... I wish I had a recording of that, but I don't. But anyway, I got through one time, and I spoke with Mr. Snurdly. Nice enough fella. I got to speak to one of the guest hosts on Rush. I think it was the guy that did... I forget his name, but I think it was the guy that does, like, intelligence gathering... Or that, you know, former CIA agent out of uh, Washington State, last I heard. I haven't listened to the show in a while, as I said, but... Uh, pleasant enough experience, and the interesting thing is the second that I got on air and started talking to the host, they, um, I got several comments on my Facebook wall, back to back to back, where friends of mine were listening to me on the Rush Limbaugh show. That was kind of interesting. But... I've never had a direct word with the guy. I never had a interaction with him outside of, you know, being on his show while he was out for the day. But 
I know he's got family that's grieving. I know he's got friends that are grieving his loss. Politics aside on all that, people on both sides of the political aisle, from the moderate on both sides to the extreme on both sides, from the good to the bad on both sides, have people that care about them. And having been through grief just over four years ago in the loss of my father, having been through grief uh, not even two years ago in the loss of a friend of mine that was 17, a kid from church that I was, he was in the praise band, he was in youth group, he helped me out side hustling in the summertime a while back, really good kid. Um, I wouldn't wish grief on anybody. I would So, these people that are celebrating the death of people just because they sit on the wrong side of the political aisle from you, it's mind-boggling to me because if they've ever lost anybody, they know that there's people that are in the background of that hurting just because their friends and loved ones have passed away. I don't, I don't get that. Like I said before, there's only a handful of people whose death should be celebrated. Stalin, Chairman Mao, Manson. That, you know, it's a pretty short list. You know, serial killers and homicidal maniacs. That's kind of about all I got. So, it just blows my mind to see people have such little regard for human life on both sides of the aisle because both of them are guilty of it. So, anyway, that's what I got. Thanks for tuning in. Catch y'all next time.